Good evening. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, I hope that you get away with something from this session. I received a very beautiful, long letter in the, one of my comment section from Discount Hub, the person called themselves, um, explaining I am Myra, his and um, his position in the Kenyan culture. Um, in my comments and in my posts, I really haven't considered much of the Kenyan culture. I had a roommate who was Kenyan back in, in my senior year of college, and I was older. She was like 18, and I was maybe 22. Or 20, yeah, 22. I was 22, and she was 18 going on 19. So I was older than she was. And um, what I learned from her were things like the food, chapate, uh, minced meat. Um, the, there was, I don't think there was such an issue with mixed uh, marriages at doing my youth. I think um, because she used to talk about 0.5. I don't know if anybody here is 0.5, it is, if it is a word that is still used to differentiate the demographics in Kenya. Um, basically, that's all I remember of my roommate. I mean, she mingled well with other African cultures because I mean, we're in America. So um, I remember she had a boyfriend from Ghana and she had good friends from, um, from Nigeria because, well, the president of the African SA was Nigerian. That is African Student Association. That's what I mean by SA Student Association. So um, that's all I know really about um, about it. I also remember that she was very well off, although she didn't come out as being well off because she was asking, actually asking me for a place to live in. There was a free room. There was an empty room in the place that I was in at the time. She met me in at a supermarket. She told me that I was her long. I looked like her long lost cousin, and I clarified that I wasn't from her country. And then, you know, I I was able to let her know about our free room since she needed a place to sublet. And she came by, not by herself, but she came with two Jamaican girls and one girl from Costa Rica. So there were four of them. And then I ended up becoming roommates with her during my senior year because we met during the summer. And we became, and then we moved out of that place because it was only boys. It was, it was like I was in a place with only Haitian boys. But for me, it was okay because it was my culture. They were like my brothers. But I guess, you know, for my own respect, I ended up moving out, um, you know, with a, in roommate, with a girl instead of being in a house with four boys. So anyways, um, that's all I know about. That was my interaction with Kenya was through Christine. I think her name begins with an N or an M. It was a weird name. I can never remember that last name. But anyway, we got, but let's go back to Ayamara. So um, for a young man who's Kenyan, Kenyan and um, with his background, you know, I was, it was explained to me by Discount Hub, you know, it, like, you know, his entire secondary education and primary education was in Kenya as well as his higher education was in Kenya. And the culture, apparently the Kenyans are very friendly from, uh, from Christine. I, I could tell, I mean, she, she called me out in the middle of the store. Hey, 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 you look like my long lost cousin. Um, I did actually turn out to look like her older sister who was studying in London at the time. But anyway, to continue with Myra, Myra, I want to, I really feel for Myra. I feel for him when he called out to his mom to pray for him. He, uh, there's still a little boy there, you know, and um, there's a lot of vulnerability. And I know we make fun of him because of, uh, for me personally, it's because of his colorism. And um, for others, it's because of his mannerism, um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I think the way they make fun of him is like they would make fun of any little brother of theirs. You know, if you say that you're going to wear no underwear, like, you know, how's the little ding ding going <laughs> to? Oh, gosh. Um, Black Beauty and Modesta. You guys love I Am I Right. And I just hope that he understands the love that you have for him as their little 
as your little brother and um, just to get him straight, you know, they say that a community that raises the child in Africa and you guys are raising that child as a community. And for him, the torture, it's, I guess it's not just that that caused him to call out for mommy from America. Um, there must be a lot going on with him. And he has settled for such a humble situation, cooking ugali for the family that is hosting him and not going out and looking for the bling bling, if you will. I really admire that. Yes, he's settling. For me personally, I would really like to see him try to work in the United States. Just try it out. See what it's like. Take advantage while you're looking for your visas. Apply for a work visa and work for a few months. And maybe, like, I think it might help. It help him. Um, I don't know. I don't know how the culture is in Kenya. I know that some people work and some don't. You know, but I think it really will help him out because right now he's staying at in the home and they go to work and um, cooking ugali. I'm hoping that he learns how to cook other things, you know. But at the same time, I think working a little in the U.S. would really help him. There's so much the U.S. has to offer a young person. And I think his, if he were to go to these South American countries, it's just getting lost. I, I, for me personally, whether he likes the U.S. or not, especially at his age, he needs to start thinking about settling down. Not just, I mean, it's not all about YouTube. Life is more than YouTube. YouTube has bought him a lot, apparently, and he's reached a lot of people. And here I am talking about it. A lot of people are talking about it. He doesn't want people to talk about about him or just let him live his life. But um, we should be able to express ourselves. And the, he shouldn't take it personally that people are using the media to talk and to review and to express themselves. It shouldn't be a personal thing. Um it is our interest in his uniqueness that make us talk. I mean, we can't just sit there and watch and not talk or just say, oh, we're not going to watch this because this person, this young man is sensitive and we don't want to... I mean, he does it. He, if he out, outwardly speaks something when something doesn't make him feel well, like um, when Ponte went out and lashed on, you know, Ponte reacted to what he heard and um and then Myra went came and um defeated him you know um that and uh defended himself so he knew he was gonna get in trouble he did say that he was gonna get in trouble just before he um just before he answered the questions about Ponte and then it got him into losing that friendship and then um when it came to the two young men in in the U.S., um, they are very Americanized in their own way, even though they're African, they're, they still have acquired some American mannerisms, such as throwing shade and um, subliminal messages and all kinds of things. So um, Myra may be shocked, I guess, at the way things turned out. At the same time, it, everything happens for a reason, and I think that is God that is changing the waters because Myra no, feel, may feel like he has no control over what he wants. Some um, people are taking it away. That's the way American system works when it comes to his losing the friendship with that girl. But then again, that is so childish. The girl coming out saying that the boy that smells badly and all that after he pays for her to come. I mean, that is like elementary school, not even high school. Um, not even high school behavior, you know, very, very childish behavior. So then Myra is supposed to feel bad. The girl calls, you know, calls him smelly or whatever. So never, nevertheless, you know what? I think that's just a wake up call for Myra. I understand they say that he cannot marry any girl in his country because of um, class system at the same time. He could find love, you know, maybe he doesn't want to go out and find somebody who wants him for his, whatever he's accumulated, you know, so he wants somebody who's comparable and many girls may be more 
professional minded you know youtube is not necessarily considered as professional you know and it's yet not if i don't think it is yet in art you know it's just a hobby for me, as far as i think so um no girl is gonna take that seriously and um priya maya Mar mara likes priya a lot but from the start, Priya never liked Mara. She learned and taught herself to be kind to him. But she was very mean to him for a reason at the beginning. At the beginning, I noticed Priya was as mean to Mara, even meaner to Mara, than Ponte was to D. So Mara and D keeps running into these people who just don't like them, who are just being polite, be it because they want... I guess the YouTube uh, fame or just being polite and they just keep running into these people and not seeing through the people until like everything blows out or maybe they know about it and they just want to put up the front to build the YouTube audience you know because the that video she made crying you know oh BJ loves me BJ loves me we all knew that DJ did not love her. We knew that she was crying because Ponte did some because Ponte was around and she didn't know why Ponte was around because she wanted to break up with Ponte. And there was you could feel the tension when Ponte kept on staying away from her. Like, you know, and Mara kept on trying to bring them together, not really understanding what was going on between the sister and Ponte. And so the whole front about BJ was to uh to mask the problem that was really going on with Ponte. Okay, so that's that. Anyway, let's go back to our son, Aymara, who we want to, I want the best for him. I do not want him to fall into any depression. I really like the way he he's staying, keeping it low um, at Mr. Mutua. I also I would suggest to him that he can he um revert to some Bible reading. Um, you don't have to read like big chunks of the Bible. Consider the Psalms; they are very, very, very comforting. Um, I believe Myra said that he believes in God. He's a, he's a, a spiritualist, like he said, not necessarily religious. But anyway, um, for me, the Bible. Every time I'm in my deepest, 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 um, deepest woe, particularly I think when I was 23 after leaving college, I was in a very uh, deep fear, you know? I went to my father's place and I was still afraid. The need of cushion and a parent sometimes or of family, that warmth, you know, the songs or that blanket, and they will help you. Um, sometimes reading, some people say you read seven Psalms, whatever. So even if one for me would be okay. And also making a list of thanking God. For example, I thank God that I'm alive. I thank God that I have a lot of issues, but despite that, I thank God um, that I'm okay. I'm able to work right now. I'm at work even as I'm doing this. This is my break. I took a little break. Because in this job, I just take breaks as I please. Um, I don't always take breaks, but today I said, let me take a break. Let me make a little video. Since it's been 24 hours, almost 24 hours since I made the last one. Okay, so I thank God for that. And I'm also very grateful to God for I am Myra's videos. And I am grateful to God that he has found the host family. And I pray that that host family shall be blessed and that they shall continue to nurture that young man like their own relative and um read the psalm psalm 35 psalm 23 read the psalms 